Board of Regents today who arrived by boat to tour the Lumcom Pelican in Acadiana today. This boat, 120-foot boat, that does research in the Gulf of Mexico and, and other places, but mainly the Gulf of Mexico, it's, has a submergical aboard, and it, it's got the p capability of doing uh, research on oil spills, on dead spots in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it researchers from around the country, from east coast to west coast, uh, lease the Pelican from the uh, Lumcom and use it. The boat is in service every single day that it's not in port for some type of maintenance, but it, it serves the uh, scientific community throughout the United States. Lumcon has a threefold mission. Our first one is to provide the assets such as the Pelican um, and a marine lab down uh, south of Homa and Cocodry uh, for use to the marine scientific community of the state of Louisiana. Our second mission is to educate the public about the oceans and our coastal uh, our coastal issues such as uh, coastal loss and coastal conservation. And our last mission, of course, is to do research in that area with a team of faculty um, that reside at the marine facility in Cocodry. We are now on board the Pelican and we're standing on the aft deck. This is the working deck and one of the most important parts of this ship. Um, you can see here that we have two cranes and an A-frame. These are used to deploy the equipment off the back of the ship. Everything from this remote operated vehicle, an underwater robot that can explore the depths of the ocean, to uh, equipment such as CTDs that are just a piece of equipment that measures the salinity and the temperature of the ocean and the oxygen of the ocean, um, and a variety of nets and other gear as well. At any given time when we go out to sea, we have, a, we have up to 14 researchers and a total of seven crews, so 22 people on board in, in total. And those researchers can range from professors and full faculty all the way down to undergraduate students. We are now in the lab of the research vessel Pelican. Um, this is the wet lab we're in now. It's the primary scientific uh, portal on the ship. Um, after a full day's worth of operations, the scientists will uh, use this lab space to uh, tend to equipment, to uh, process samples, whether they're biological samples or chemical samples. Um, this is really the hub of the scientific activity on this vessel. The typical things that are viewed here uh, on a research project vary quite a bit. So if it's a biological cruise, they may be looking at specimens, uh, fish specimens that have been collected from the waters or very bizarre and unique animals from the deep oceans. Um, they, uh, if it's a geology cruise, they may be processing sediment taken out of cores. Um, if it's a chemistry group, they will be processing uh, water samples, um, measuring the oxygen in the water, uh, a whole variety of things. We are in the wheelhouse or the bridge of the Pelican right now, and this is the operations center for the entire ship. This is where um, the captain and the first mate um, in alternating shifts will steer uh, the vessel. The navigation occurs here. Um, this is the sort of heart of the entire ship. The vessel has actually went through several major upgrades in her 32-year life. Um, that includes all the navigational equipment, the engines, um, everything on the ship is essentially brand new except one very important thing, which is the hull. And that hull goes through annual inspections, and that's what determines the life of any research vessel or any vessel um, is that the strength and integrity of the hull. And we know that we have about five to ten years left on the hull of the Pelican. And because it's such a the Pelican serves as such a huge asset, not only for the state of Louisiana, but for the Gulf of Mexico. Um, we are currently beginning the process of uh, designing a new ship and securing the funding we need to replace the Pelican. The Pelican is the only major research vessel that can serve the, that serves uh, the researchers who are studying the Gulf of Mexico. So without a Pelican, we wouldn't have the ability to say, study the next oil spill or study the currents of the Gulf of Mexico that help us understand hurricane tracks. And so the, the Research that's conducted on a ship like this is vital to the state, vital to the economy of the state. And so it's something that we need to have as both the state and along the Gulf Coast in its entirety. It is the one and only boat on the Gulf Coast that does this type of research. Texas A&M does have a boat and they do other types of research. But the Pelican has been in service for 40 years, longer than any other ship. 
and quite frankly, it's in need of replacement. The equipment on it is extremely valuable and up to date. It, uh, uh, you cannot get better equipment, but the boat itself is now in need of replacement. But uh, it's a wonderful operation. They keep it well maintained, and like I said, it, it's just used every day of the year. This is a ROV. This is a work-class ROV that is used in, worldwide and uh, mainly in the oil field, oil industry. This one in particular uh, was built in Morgan City, Louisiana, and uh, in a lot of the technology, it's a newer, a newer system for oceaneering, and a lot of the technology came out of the uh, Macondo oil spill. Um, with the pumping and, and being able to intervention, uh, be a, uh, work with the BOPs. We're in the galley of the Pelican now. Uh, research trips range anywhere from a few days to up to three to four weeks. And so um, at the beginning of every cruise, enough food has to be brought on for that entire research trip. And we have a um, cook on board who prepares three meals a day at 6, 12, and 6. It's a very regimented schedule. Um, and our cook, and actually the Pelican in multiple cases, has won awards for the food uh, on board the ship. They say scientists really only remember one thing about a research cruise, and that's whether the food was good or not. So um, our cook is, is well known for the quality of, of the meals that he provides. How many uh, researchers typically can be on uh, the Pelican at one time? Uh, it is 14, crew me uh, 14 scientific uh, members of the team and then uh, additional seven crew on board. So 22 people at a time. There's a ship on the East Coast and a ship on the West Coast that also are scientific research vessels. We don't want to lose the ability to be able to be the lead research institute with the best boat in the Gulf of Mexico and, and also all the way down to South America. And uh, the research it does is invaluable. What can I say? All the universities in the state from LSU, uh, ULM, Tulane, uh, uh, Louisiana, Lafayette, all the universities use this ship for their research and for teaching. And, and it's essential that the boat be in operation, particularly being the lead uh, state with offshore oil rigs, uh, with the fisheries in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we need to be able to study them right here in Louisiana. It's, it, it's, it's a, it is an invaluable asset. I just want everyone to know that LUMCON is actually is funded part as, as a taxpayer initiative as part of the Louisiana Board of Regents. And so these vessels and the marine facility of LUMCON are owned by the taxpayers and the citizens of the state. And I want them to know, see how, um, how vital that, that, uh, that funding is and how important our mission is at LUMCON. If people have questions like more information about LUMCON and the Pelican, what should they do? They can visit our website. It's lumcon.edu.